Am I the a-hole for not leaving an equal share of my inheritance to my stepchildren as my biological child in my will? Plus many updates. I, 55 male, married my wife, 52 female, two decades ago, bringing with her two children from her previous marriage, 27 female and 30 male. We also have a child of our own, 19 female. I am the primary breadwinner. My wife has always been a stay-at-home mom to raise all three children, and since they have left, continues to run the house and I am more than happy with this arrangement. Most of our joint assets therefore came from my income, as my wife came to the marriage with no assets. We are aware that wife's ex-husband has had a windfall of inheritance money, as conveyed by my stepchildren. This means that my stepchildren are said to inherit that windfall if not squandered. Their paternal grandmother and other family members are still in the picture with possible inheritance that may yet be passed down. Conversely, my biological daughter would not benefit from that inheritance money and would only benefit from whatever inheritance I can give her, as no other relatives in the picture that could support her or leave additional inheritance money. I have therefore chosen, with support from my wife, to will a larger portion of inheritance to my biological daughter. For example, if my wife had died, died in an accident tomorrow, we would be leaving about $900,000 in assets to 19 female, and $25,000 each to 27 female and 30 male. 19 female would have no family support, thus relying entirely on the inheritance money, whereas 27 female and 30 male will still have other family members that can support them. If ex-husband died tomorrow, 27 female and 30 male are likely to receive $250,000 each in assets if not more, and will still have us to support them when needed, as we currently do. When we discuss this with 27 female and 30 male, emphasizing that they are set to receive inheritance from ex-husband and potentially others on his side of the family, they determined this was unfair, that my assets should be split evenly between the three of them. I retorted that if their father died, would 19 female get any of that inheritance? And they said no, because he is not her father. To be fair, they do look up to me and consider me as a father figure even though I am not their father. Therefore, I am wondering if I am the a-hole? Now for the top advice before the mini-update. Not the a-hole, but I see no reason why you ever should have discussed it with the three kids in the first place. You and your wife are in agreement. Why ask the kids for their opinion? especially since you're only in your 50s. I don't think it's to get their opinion. I think it's so everyone is on the same page in case anything happens. Deaths can tear a family apart, especially when there are surprises in the will. I think it's smart, even if the stepkids didn't like what they heard. Exactly. When people have these conversations, it's usually an effort to avoid anybody being blindsided at a time they already lost their loved one, or an attempt to explain the reasons behind the decision to avoid any animosity while everyone is grieving. I'm going through this with my grandmother right now, and her reasoning is that it's important to her that she knows if there's anything of hers that's really special to us. For example, I want her books. Because she and I are both avid readers, and even though we like different genres, having them would bring me happiness and make me think of her. None of us is gonna come out and say that stuff to her, so if she didn't ask, she wouldn't know. You are likely going to get crap on here, but I'm going to say not the a-hole. The sub seems to think step parents have to be perfect and there should be no differences ever. First off, I personally am fine with step kids getting less of an inheritance. I say this as someone who grew up in a blended family throw in the face that their father has a totally separate inheritance for them and they'll have more anyway. I'd say your stepkids are just greedy. Also, there are two adults contributing to the inheritance, mom and dad, and not just mom. So at minimum, a fair split is that the youngest gets two times what the older children get. But I think it's fair to skew it to try to give all three kids roughly the same in the end when factoring in their dad's contribution. Not day whole. Very telling that they said no sharing their inheritance because their father is not her father. How is that different from them and you? They are being greedy OP. You can tell because they think it's unfair when you do the exact same thing to them that they want to do to her. Now for the mini update. I've been looking at some really insightful comments about how to calculate what to give my stepchildren, with a number of comments suggesting I do need to give more. One or two people have suggested a formula of first splitting assets in half considering 50-50 between wife and myself, and then dividing the 50 between the three children, essentially giving my stepchildren about one-sixth each. 
However, as noted above, there is more to consider here than a simple division, such as support from others. But also, some of this is physical assets, like a house, that cannot be simply considered as cash value. But it is clear that we, wife and I, in this joint decision, should be willing a higher amount to my stepchildren. Next story. Am I the a-hole for throwing away the expensive whiskey my brother got me for my 40th? I'm 40 male, just turned 40 last week. I'm divorced and have two teenage kids with my ex-wife, 17 male and 14 female. My whole family came to my at my girlfriend's apartment last Saturday for my birthday party. My parents, some aunts and uncles, some cousins, my three brothers with their families, my two kids, and my girlfriend's 15-year-old son who lives with us. I am a recovered alcoholic and I've been sober for six years now. Alcohol absolutely ruined my life. It destroyed my marriage and nuked my relationship with my kids for years. So I don't allow alcohol in my home now. For anyone. It just isn't served nor tolerated here. My entire family knows this very well as they know my entire history with it. For my 40th, my brother bought me a very expensive bottle of whiskey. It had writing on it, a very heavy bottle and very old whiskey. So it probably cost him a couple hundred bucks. When he gave me the bottle, I was shocked and said, I don't drink, but thanks for the gift. He then opened the bottle and started pouring shots in plastic cups for everyone. My daughter had a panic attack at the smell of the alcohol, which I am painfully aware is my fault and I will never forgive myself for it. So I told my brother to take the alcohol out on a balcony and just leave it there. He wouldn't do it and took a shot of the whiskey. I told him to seriously stop it and he proceeded to pour the whiskey. He then said I'm acting like a sober saint now when I ruined everyone's birthdays for years with my drinking. I told him to come to the hallway with me and talk it out. He refused and put a glass of whiskey in my hand. I took the trash can, threw the whiskey bottle in it and the plastic cups and took the trash out. My brother then stormed off and my mom followed him. She later called me, demanding an apology for disrespecting my brother like that. My dad said I was being overly sensitive and some of my other family members also agree. Am I the a-hole here? Not the a-hole. What your brother did is really, really awful and cruel. Possibly the worst gift I've ever heard of someone giving another, especially as he is aware of your struggles and recovery. Congratulations on recovery and standing up for yourself and your family. And I can't believe the rest of the family supporting the brother and calling Opie disrespectful. It's a bizarre world. I know. It's basically a miracle Opie is safely in recovery with that kind of support system. Kudos to Opie. I knew a couple where the husband was an alcoholic but tried very hard to stay sober. Every time he had a few successful weeks, the wife would buy wine to celebrate and ask him to have one glass with her. Just one glass. You can do that. One really don't need enemies with family like that. Not the a-hole. Brother was being horrendously terrible slash taunting. Read a room, dude. Especially the pain this caused the kids. Not a situation to double down on your bottle flex. Mom and anyone upset at Opie can pound sand and get their juice on their own time. Opie should have drain poured it to prevent them from dumpster diving afterwards. I say this as someone who drinks. The level of disrespect shown Opie here is off the charts. Now contact a lot of them. He should have poured a whiskey on his brother's dumb head. Like, what the heck did I just read? I hope Opie goes no contact with him and everyone enabling his brother because holy smokes. Next story. Am I the a-hole for breaking my grandma's heart? My 16 female dad is a horrible person. I'm sorry, but he just is. He isn't all that terrible to me or my brother, 17 male, but he's horrible to our mom. Growing up, it was very obvious that our dad saw our mom as lesser than. He'd yell at her over everything and made her responsible for everything. Cleaning, taking care of us, etc. My mom never said anything and tried her hardest to make it seem like everything was okay. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm too scared to stand up to my dad. I always freeze. My brother, on the other hand, does not care. He yells back and isn't afraid of anything. I think my brother realized I'm too scared to protect our mom and recently told us that he's going to college nearby and will be commuting as the college doesn't require first years to live on campus. My parents were confused and my dad was a little upset. He kept telling him that he's going to miss out and he'll regret it, but my brother didn't budge. Mom even told him that he should go and that she'll be fine, but my brother just said that they're lucky he's even going to college. Well, yesterday we got a surprise visit from our grandma, dad's mom. 
She never visits, and when she does, she also just treats my mom the same as dad, so we weren't very excited. But we were civil, because, well, if we aren't, then she'll find a way to blame our mom. It was okay at first, but then she asked my mom, Is this what you wanted? Are you proud of yourself? My mom started to shake, but my brother immediately got in between them. Grandma just rolled her eyes and asked my brother if he was really going to throw away his life just because he thinks his mom's too fragile to survive without him. My brother didn't say anything. I then spoke up and said, It's not because of mom, it's because of you and dad. You guys are horrible, and you really need to get the heck out. My grandma immediately started yelling at me. She said that she expected better, and said that I'm rude, disrespectful, and bratty. She then told my mom that she raised horrible kids, before leaving angrily. I know I was just standing up for my mom, and my brother keeps telling I'm fine, but I feel guilty. My grandma apparently adores me according to my dad, and I really broke her heart. It is not like I made things better, maybe even worse. And now my dad is expecting me to apologize, but I don't know if I want to. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. Your dad is just manipulating you by saying you broke her heart. Doesn't sound like she has one to break anyway. For real. My grandma apparently adores me according to my dad. Really? Because he just called you rude, disrespectful, and bratty, and said you were a horrible kid. I know it's awful to finally see her for who she truly is, but she only liked you because you didn't stand up to her or your dad, and let them walk all over you. The moment you spoke up with them, they both turned on you. That's what abusers do. Not the a-hole. Yeah, seems like the father inherited the lack of heart as well. The father and grandmother are the only a-holes in this situation. But I hope Opie and her brother try to formulate a plan to help their mother to leave, because she's probably dealing with a lot more abuse than they realize. Especially if she's literally shaking with fear in response to something like her old mother-in-law getting pissy with her. Not the a-hole. While perhaps not the most tactful thing to say, it sounds like this has been building for a long time, and you are human. Your feelings and emotions are justified. I highly suspect that your father is using your grandmother's broken heart as a form of emotional manipulation. I would wager this is something is done countless times to you, your brother and your mother. Have you spoken to a trusted adult or a therapist about some of the things happening at home? Neither you nor your brother should have to feel like it's your job to protect your mother. It has been building, and I guess I also took out my feelings regarding my dad out on her as well. And I don't know, my brother always told me not to tell anyone and that he'll handle it. So I guess I haven't. I think my mom's siblings once tried asking me about the situation at home when I was younger. But again, my brother said not to say anything, so I didn't. Thinking back, I think they know something's up. Not the a-hole. Your father and grandmother owe you, your mother, and your brother an apology. And I hope someday your mother will leave this mess. I hope my mom does too. It's hard though. He doesn't give her any access to money and she hasn't had a job in years since my dad made her quit, so I can't blame her. My brother and I have been saving up though, and my brother is planning on taking extra classes so he can get through college as fast as he can and let a good job. I have faith it'll work. I doubt we'll ever get apologies though. I figured your father was the typical controlling a-hole. I hope your mother doesn't feel obligated to stay with your father for her children's sake, because that is fairly common. Last story. Am I the a-hole for making my parents choose between me and my ex slash former friend? I was best friends with Jen from preschool through ninth grade. Her home life was pretty rough, and she practically lived at my house, and my parents called her the daughter they never had. When we were in ninth grade, I asked her out. It took some convincing, but she eventually said yes. She broke up with me over text the day after our date. She barely went to school, didn't text, and wasn't at my house at all the next few weeks. She eventually showed up at my house in the middle of the night. I took her in, no questions asked. Then she left in the middle of the night a few weeks later. I admit I didn't love having her around. It didn't make it easy on her. But apparently her leaving was hard on everybody. My parents even had to go to therapy. Last year, I moved out for college, but I was still planning on coming to visit. A few months after I moved out, Jen showed up at my parents' house pregnant and with a baby. They took her in again, then called me and my brothers asking how we feel about her staying with them. My brothers were okay with it, but I can't forgive her for what she did a few years ago. My parents let her stay anyways but said they had conditions on her staying with them, like her going to therapy and either enrolling in college or getting a job. 
I told them I still wasn't okay with it. We argued a bit and I told them I wouldn't visit if she was living there. She's still there, but I held true to my word and haven't visited since. They're trying to get me to come for Christmas, but I won't be there if Jen is living there. So now they're calling me petty and saying I need to forgive her, but I think I have a right to be upset. So at 15, you were told no, and then after bullying her, which you refer to as it took some convincing, she eventually said yes. You had one single date, which you harassed her into agreeing to. Then you referred to her not wanting a second date, which she also didn't want the first date either, by the way, as breaking up with you. She then spent weeks avoiding you, which you still didn't pick up on. You don't say how old you are now, but it's clear you still resent her for not wanting to date you. You're the a-hole. You forgot the part where Opie didn't love having her around didn't make it easy on her, meaning that Opie took a home life that could potentially have been stable and safe for a girl whose original home life seems anything but, and turned it into a living hell for her. All because she turned down a second date after having been bullied into a first one. Opie, I disagree with your family. You don't need to forgive anything because you have nothing to forgive. She did nothing wrong. What you need to do is beg and grovel and pray for forgiveness from both her and your family for everything you have done to make this girl's life a living hell. If you can't do that, keep staying away. It's better for everyone, especially that poor girl. Not to mention how low she must have been feeling to willingly return to the home of a boy who made it a living hell for her. Opie, she was desperate enough for help from the only people read your parents, who showed her any amount of compassion and kindness, that she decided dealing with your pathetic butt was worth it 